Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform an independent samples Welsh t-test manually, uh, that is to say uh, using a t-distribution table. The formula for the t-value looks like uh, this. In here in the numerator, uh, the top part of this fraction, you will see an x with a bar on top of it and a 1, and an x with a bar on it with a 2. Now, the x with the bar on top of it uh, actually indicates a mean, and to indicate that specifically, the little number in the lower right corner then indicates of which category. So x bar 1 is the mean score or average score of category 1, and x bar 2 is the mean score of category 2. Now, the mean itself, the average, uh, has a scary looking formula that looks something like this. And in here you will notice an NI, which actually represents the number of scores in that specific category. And you'll probably also notice this uh, XJI, which then represents the J score in that specific category. So in order to calculate the T value, we would first need to calculate the means, which is done on the next slide. So to calculate the mean, we have this big scary looking formula. In essence, actually it's just calculating an average, but let's use that formula and an example. So I have a few grades uh, given by some uh, students and I also have their gender. Now the first thing to do is to actually split this up because we need it per category. So my categories are male and female. So I'll use the eight, the three, the um, two and the one, and the one for the male students. And let's first focus on that one. And the first value to look for is that NI, which is the, was the number of, category, uh, number of items in the category. So I have one, two, three, four, uh, five grades in here. So actually N1 is in this case five. I can fill that out in the formula here and also here. And that gives me the following result. As you can see, I simply substituted N1 and N1 here, and I can replace these now with five. Then the next part is actually this whole big sum sign. So the weird looking E simply means to add all of those up. So in essence, just add all of these numbers up. In this case, that's gonna be eight plus three plus two plus one plus one divided over five. And uh, that's going to be 15 over 5. So uh, x bar 1, the average of the male scores was a 3. Now we can do exactly the same thing for the females. So we first select all the females. That's a 7 and a 7, a 5, a 3, and a 9. And there's the 8. So that gives us these. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6. In total so n2 will be 6 we fill that out in the formula again so uh, this case for n2 and that becomes a 6 and also in the denominator it becomes a 6 simply means to add all of these up so all of these uh, need to be added up and that gives us 7 plus 7 plus 5 plus 3 plus 9 plus 8 over 6 which is the same as 39 over six, and therefore the average of the female scores is a 6.5. So let's get back to our t-value, which had this as a formula, and we actually now calculated in the example x bar one and x bar two. They were three and 6.5. So we can fill that out in the formula, and three minus 6.5 simply becomes minus 3.5. Now that only leaves that SE in the denominator, and SE is actually short for a standard error. Unfortunately, the formula for that one is again a little bit tricky. As you can see, the formula does contain N1 and N2 again, which we already had for our sample, which was five and six. So we can already fill those out. The S up here with a square is actually the sample variance of that specific category. And on that one also has another formula which looks like uh, this. So we'll first have to calculate uh, this one, uh, 
for our sample or example. Sorry, that's going to be done on the next slide. So to calculate the sample standard deviation, this was the big scary formula. Now let's first focus on the mill and the formula then becomes because this was the first category, we simply substitute all the little i's that are in there with a one. So that should become something like uh, this. Now we already actually calculated a few of these values. We saw that x bar and we also saw the n1, which was here and here. So we can substitute those already as well. Then let's bring out the original values. Now the first thing to focus on is that we actually need to calculate for each score the difference with that mean, so minus three. So we get eight minus three, which becomes five. We get uh, three minus three, which becomes zero, etc. Note, by the way, that if you do everything properly, all of these should add up to zero. Now, the next thing is to actually, as you can see in the formula, to square those results. So I've done that here. So we take the five and we simply square the result and we get 25. Notice that we square the entire result of the difference. So it's minus one in it's entirely squared. So that becomes plus one. So there are no negatives anymore. Then the big looking scary E here again simply means to add up all of these values. So we get 25 plus zero plus one plus four plus four and still divided over five minus one. So that simply gives us 3404 and that's the same as 8.5. Now let's do the same for the female group. The female, the variance is then going to be S2 and we simply substitute 2 everywhere and then we actually fill out the values that we already knew for this and that gives us all of this. Again we first subtract the mean from that category for each score so that's being done over here and then we square those results which gives us all of this. Then we need to sum up all of those results as you can see here and that's basically saying to sum up all of these that gives us all of this which is actually 23.5 over 5 and that's simply 4.7 now that we have our sample standard deviations we can return to the t value and the standard error and its calculation we have all of these measures uh, now calculated and we can simply fill those out. We first calculate the standard error. And for that, as you can see, we needed the two standard deviations, uh, sorry, variances. That's these two. And we needed the uh, scores, the number of scores for each category, which we also already have in our example. So we can simply fill out the formula and then actually calculate the result, which is approximately 1.576. Now the next thing is then to actually use that standard error and insert it into the calculation for the T value. And for that, we also need the two averages, the means, which indeed we already have. So we can now simply fill out this value in the formula as well. And that leaves us with three minus 6.5 uh, over 1.576. That is approximately minus 2.221 and that's the t value for the, the welsh t test uh, the independent samples one in order to look up a t value in a, a distribution table of t values we also need something known as the degrees of freedom unfortunately for the welsh test that formula looks extremely big for some people now, luckily though, actually all of these variables that you see in here, we actually already have. So if we take, for example, the variance one uh, of the first category, you can see that in here and you can also see that in here. So if we use this template, we can fill those two values out at that and those two positions. Then the next one you might notice is the variance of the second category, which is actually up here. 
and also up here. So we'll simply fill those out here and here in our template. So if I do that, we get this. Then the next one that we still are missing is actually the number of categories in the first, uh, some, sorry, number of scores in the first one, which you'll find up here, here, and here, which was in our example, n equals five. And I'm simply gonna be filling that n out here, here, and also here in the template. So there we go. Then the last one that we're actually still needing is of course N2, which we'll find here and here and also here. And N2 was actually six. So I'll simply be filling that out here and here and also at this position. So there we go. As you might notice in this one, there are no unknowns anymore. So it's just a matter of calculating everything now. So the top part, the numerator actually becomes 6.167 uh, approximately, and the denominator, all of this becomes approximately 0.845. So our degrees of freedom is roughly 7.296. So although this formula looks pretty scary for some people, um, actually all everything you've already calculated when calculating the variances and uh, the means. So now that we have our degrees of freedom and t value, we can actually make use of a t distribution table. Note that this table is using a right tail probabilities and I'll show you on the next slide what if you have that is using the two tail probabilities. So we'll look into the first thing is our degrees of freedom. And as you can see here, it says DF. So we actually will be needing to look for the 7.296 in all of these. And as you might notice, there is no 7.296, but there is seven. And usually we would round this down. Uh, check with your lecturer what he or she prefers. Um, it could even be complicated as to do some interpolation, but I would take it too far for this video. I'm just gonna assume you're gonna round down to seven in this case, and that means we'll simply be looking in the seventh row. Then in that row, uh, we'll actually be trying to find this T value of 2.221. You can actually ignore any negative signs that are in front of it. And as you might notice, there is no 2.221, and it would actually fall somewhere between these two up here. And that indicates that the significance is you then actually look for the column titles of these so for this one that's 0 0.0025 and for this one that's 0 0.005 so we simply look at those so our one tail significance p values one tail p values will then be somewhere between 0 0.025 and 0 0.05 However, most likely you actually want a two-tailed one. So you can then simply multiply those two results uh, each by simply two. So 0 0.025 times two becomes the 0 0.05 and 0 0.05 times two becomes 0.10. So our significance will be somewhere between 0 0.05 and 0 0.10, which uh, usually the threshold is 0 0.05. Anything below that would consider it significant. So in this case, it won't be significant. All right, on the next slide, I'll show you how you can use a table that actually does this one uh, already straight away. So if you have a two-tailed table, then uh, it actually goes exactly the same as with a one-tailed, but you don't need to multiply the final result. So again, we'll be looking at our degrees of freedom, which is usually in the first uh, column, and we'll be looking out for this 7.296, which unfortunately we won't be able to find, but we usually then round this down to seven. Um, check with your lecturer what he or she prefers. There are some advanced techniques to interpolate this, but that goes too far for this video. Then in that actually row, we'll be looking for our T value, which is 2.221. And you can actually ignore the negative sign if you have any in there. Now, as you might look into the row of the degrees of freedom of seven, um, you won't be able to find this 2.221. And what usually happens is that it's somewhere between two values. So in this case, between these two. 
and uh, that simply means we then look up to the column titles of those that's these two and that will give us our significance and in this case that means that the two-tailed significance is somewhere between that 0.05 and 0.10 um, if in any case your value is uh, for example lower than the first one then it would indicate that your uh, significance is less than um, oh sorry bigger than this one or if your uh, value is higher than the last one then it means it's going to be less than this one I think that covers roughly all the options all right thank you for watching hope this was helpful for you and sorry for the long video